Hey, what's up guys, Steven here. Welcome back to another video. And today I have some really big news for you. And I'm very honored that I'm chosen by Huawei to participate in the EMUI 11 beta program. So guys, I guess you heard the news already that Huawei is bringing their own operating system, Harmony OS, also to smartphones next year. And also this year there will be already an SDK for Harmony OS, which is really mind blowing. And this will be a game changer for the industry. But we'll talk about Harmony OS at the end of this video, because this video is actually dedicated to some new features in EMUI 11. Now I've got the EMUI 11 update for the P40 Pro early this week, so I could already play around with it. And it's not a finished update, so it's just for reviewers to have a closer look and to show you what new features are there. But you can expect much more features in the final version. But I would say, let's go, let's have a closer look and let's see what's new. All right, guys, so before we have a closer look at EMUI 11, today um, there were also some new watches released, like the Huawei Watch Fit, which you can see right over here with the rectangular shape, which I think is a really cool smartwatch, and the Huawei Watch GT2 Pro. We'll cover those watches in a separate video coming very soon. And this is the Nebula Gray version um, with the leather strap, which looks really, really elegant. And the Watch Fit, well, it's more a fitness tracker with really really incredible battery life and yeah the videos of those watches will come very soon. Now back to the phone. Alright guys so let's have a closer look here at about the phone. Here you can see that this is still running Android 10 so some people think well it's not running Android but of course also Huawei phones are running Android but they are not running the fully Google licensed Android. So we have um, the free version, the open source version and here on top the skin is actually called EMUI and this is what gives it the whole look. And this is now EMUI 11. So right now all the P40 Pro run EMUI 10 point something. And yeah, um, let me quickly show you what features are new in this version. All right, now the first change, well, it's more design change, but there's most of the features here in the preview. So if we go to home screen and wallpaper to always on display, so we have here some new always on displays. If we choose, for instance, here, the artistic one, then let's go to apply. Um, then here we can also change some color palettes, as you can see, you can also take um, a picture from the gallery if you want to, like for instance, let's take um, this picture right over here. And the AI will then extract the colors from the picture and put it into the always on display. You have a few color palettes, so you have some more, um, more options to customize the phone to your needs. And also here there are some new cool um, always on display rendering. So well, some small design changes, but I think it looks really cool. Now guys, this is how it looks like as you can see. So you can see the date, battery status and here the time. And if you put your finger on there, boom, unlocked and really, really fast. Now also in the always on display, you can now set a um, custom image. If you go to image right over here, then here you go to select image. And let's for instance, let's just take this picture right over here. Then you go to apply and let's check out how this looks like. So here you have a small display in the always on display, which you can preview like for instance, your girlfriend, your kid or whatever you want. Then there's also something new in the gallery. For instance, if you go to photos right over here, you can now just um, zoom in and out with your fingers. So here you can see them sorted by the date, which is really useful. So we've seen that on a lot of other phones and it's much easier now to find your pictures because earlier it was actually sometimes really hard to find pictures from a specific date. The album's layout has also changed a little bit to 4x3 format and you have some new options to also sort all your albums and pictures. Then there are also some changes in the transition engine. So to make the transitions more smooth and also some more natural, I can show you how that looks like here in the gallery, for instance, like how it zooms into the pictures. So that's very smooth and actually very natural right now. Then here in the calendar, um, for instance, if you zoom in here, you can also see those transitions. So the transitions are actually really nice right now and really smooth. Some other minor changes are like um, different animations for the icons, like here, for instance, for the heart or if we go here at the top and actually switch on do not disturb mode. So yeah, um, there are some 
kind of new animations for that. Now there is something that sounds like a really minor change but I think it's very cool and this is actually vibrate when ringing. Now vibrate when ringing was always there but now it's in sync with the audio. That means it vibrates with the audio. So it doesn't vibrate in a different pattern like the audio. So if you have a ringtone it actually vibrates um, in the same kind of tune which is really really cool and much more kind of smooth. All right so now we come to some real UI changes and yeah the multi window it's here or um, if you swipe from the right edge to the inside you can tap any app and it opens up here in that floating window which you can also now easily resize as you can see. That's really cool but also something that's new is if you go to the multitask management you can now open multi windows from here as you can see. Doesn't work with all of the apps but the most essential ones as you can see right over here. So really cool, you can have here a little floating window, for instance, if you want to check your calendar and, do, and reply to some email. Also, if you're gaming and you get a message, you can reply in a floating window. So multitasking is now really, really smooth and easy and opening it up here from the multitask management is something that's really cool. So also it's now so easy to resize um, the windows to drag and drop it around and that's very, very convenient. And you can also minimize the floating windows, then it will be right over here, which you can drag and drop around, keep it here or just remove it. Really, really cool. Another cool thing is that multi-screen collaboration, which you have seen in my review of the Huawei MateBook X Pro 2020, is that you can now have multiple multi-screen collaboration screens on your laptop. That means you can open up more apps on the laptop at the same time, which is really, really cool. You can also turn your smartphone into a scanner. That means you can actually scan images and transfer them directly to the computer, which is really, really cool. And it even allows you to do calls now from the smartphone with multi-screen collaboration on your computer. So to use it basically as a webcam, and that is really, really amazing. Then there's also a new really cool feature, which is called Me Time, which will come to most of the Huawei devices with the next update. And this is actually very similar to FaceTime, which allows you to make 1080p video calls using Wi-Fi or mobile data. But the cool thing about Me Time is actually that you can include like tablets, speakers, smart TV, and even use drones and motion cameras to share videos in real time. So this will be like FaceTime, but much, much better, which I think is a really cool feature. So right now, Me Time will only work with the Huawei P40 series, and it will roll out in 12 countries, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, Poland, and yeah, some other regions, but unfortunately not Austria. Then there are also some improvements in the AI engine, which I will show you um, with an example here, Notepad. So now you have, for instance, scan document right over here. That means you can actually just take a picture of anything right over here, and then you can open up the picture. You can also select specific areas in the picture. Let's try it right over here. So we're gonna choose this and we're gonna choose this. Then we hit um, this button right over here. And now we go back from the preview, we go to extract text. And as you can see, it starts to extract the text right over here. So now I didn't cut this very well, but the AI is now working really, really good. You can save the whole text, like save the text only. So if you quickly want to basically scan something, but you don't want to have an image, you want to have the text. And this is working really, co really good. And you see that there were some real improvements in the AI engine and also in terms of software. Then there's also something really interesting for students. For instance, if you have a Huawei tablet, you take some notes, then there's now a new feature in the notepad actually that you can put in um, pictures. Like for instance, um, let's take a photo right over here of the document as well. It doesn't matter what it is, there we go. You hit the OK button and then as you can see the picture is now in the notes. So if you're taking notes in a lecture or something, this works really good. This also works if you want to um, transfer that to your tablet. So just take a picture from your phone and will display in the notes of your tablet. So some really cool integration between Huawei devices. For sure both devices must be 
on the same Wi-Fi network. But I think it's really cool what you can do with multi-screen collaboration with the AI features. It really makes life a lot easier. Alrighty guys, so as this is just a very early preview about new features in EMUI 11, there is not too much I can show you right now. Um, so I'm currently getting updates as well. So this is build 11.00115. So when there is an update where there are some really, really new features, then I will actually bring you guys an updated video. And yeah, I will also work right now on a new guide for the P40 Pro on how to install apps. If you haven't seen it yet, there's also Petal Search. It's now this new widget right over here, which says find apps and more. For instance, you put in any app you want, like Asphalt, and there we go. And then it actually shows you here under apps where you can install this application from. That's really, really cool. And also here's the web search right now, which is working really, really much better. You have news right over here, images. So Petal Search is basically a hub for everything you want to search on the internet and especially for apps because, well, it's, it was a little bit tricky to find some apps on third party location. But now with Petal Search, this is really, really easy. Alrighty guys, so this was a quick overview over some of the new features in EMUI 11. So right now this still runs on Android 10 as you have seen, so regarding Android 11, well, we have to wait. But Huawei is actually really fast with the updates and it's pretty cool that um, they give out this better version to reviewers to test it out, to show it to people. And also Huawei is always asking for feedback. So if you have feedback, um, something you want to have in the latest version, then make sure to leave a comment down below and let Huawei see this. Alrighty guys, so that's regarding EMUI 11, looks nice and neat, but something that will change the industry is actually Harmony OS. Now Harmony OS is an open source operating system and there are many plans for that. So first of all, you, you heard only about that regarding variables, smart TVs and everything like that. But now really they made the big step and they're coming to smartphones and this will change a lot. So um, we all know the tragedy that um, basically the US um, banned Huawei and that there are really some issues with um, that they cannot use Google anymore, that um, there are also some problems right now with the chip manufacturers. But I think kind of the US underestimates Huawei and the Chinese mentality in, in general. So uh, they found another way and actually they said that in the beginning we have a vision on how we want to do that and now they are doing it. And actually I think um, it did hurt Huawei in short, in short term, of course, but I think in the long term we can see another really interesting player in the smartphone market. Because why do people buy an iPhone? People buy an iPhone because the hardware is tailored to the software. They make their own software, they make their own chips, so actually the chip design at least, and that works perfectly nice together. So Huawei has a lot of knowledge, not only on the hardware side, but will now with Harmony OS, will have a lot of knowledge on the software side. Now, I don't expect that Harmony OS will be in the beginning just like iOS, but it's the right step because, well, if you have your own hardware, if you develop your own software, you can perfectly match this together. And this is why Apple is in some things really good. And this is why um, Android's flagships have really powerful hardware, but in the benchmarks and also in daily life, they are sometimes not as smooth as an iPhone. So it could be really, really interesting if we have now a third player, a real operating system that is tailored to the devices that could perform really, really good. The big challenge, however, will be to get developers to the platform, but we have seen this with the app gallery, so they could actually implement um, apps really fast, so they had a really easy onboarding way how companies could basically just yeah, mod their application to be ready to um, launch on the app gallery, which is really, really cool to be honest. And also they're the third biggest ecosystem for apps right now, and they will also be now the third player in the smartphone market in terms of an operating system. And yeah, um, I think the ban for Huawei was really bad, but in the future, this could lead to a really superior company. Alrighty guys, I really hope that you liked it. Um, don't ask me when, how many US will come. Nobody knows right now, just Richard probably knows it. And I guess, um, this is just a personal guess, um, that it could come with the Mate 50 Pro or whatever next year. So let's see. And I'm really, really curious. So this will be definitely one of the highlights for me next year. And as always guys, if you have any questions, leave a comment down below. If you want to see more, please subscribe. 
And if you don't follow me yet on TikTok and you speak German, then also please make sure to check out my TikTok to see how I work behind the scenes. Alrighty guys, so big thanks for watching. As always, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I will catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.